Hi, this is Jim from Realtruth.net. And today, bringing you a lesson two in this, I guess, I, I don't know if we call this a series or not. It's kind of back to basics. In the first video, um, <clears throat> we just went over the six days of creation, the creation of the Sabbath day, the creation of man in this world, and that man was set in the garden to tend to the garden. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is expected of the creation, period, the whole creation. What's expected of the man that was formed out of the dust of the ground. And we'll just talk a little bit about it because this is really, really getting back to the root, to the absolute basics. And the reason for it is, is that, well, what does it matter? We got, we've got uh, the messiahs here. We, we all know about salvation and all this stuff. Well, it does matter because oh, what this world is deeming as salvation is all messed up and deceived and mixed with paganism and and idols and all kinds of um, things that are not of Yahweh. So uh, that's why this stuff is really, really important to take your minds and scrape out all the men's doctrines and all the things that you've been taught because this world has not taught you the truth has not taught you the right things and that's why we're going to the basics of the Bible the basics of the word of Yahweh and if you don't hear if you can't receive it you can't receive it so be it um, sad for you but that's the way it'll be uh, in the end. So you need to receive the word of Yahweh. You need to accept it. And that's, and we'll get into that in another video. Something that Yeshua said that when he said, if you can receive it, this is that. So, but the problem it is, the problem is most men can't receive it. <clears throat> so, now let's, we're here, we're in the garden. The man and the woman are in the garden that Yahweh planted, where he put them, where he put the man he had formed. And uh, in the garden was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And Yahweh, uh, commanded the man saying hey you can eat any tree you want to eat freely it's all yours have fun but the tree of knowledge of good and evil um, don't eat of it because in the day that you do eat of it you're going to die and uh, <clears throat> so man only had that one command Actually, too, he is taking care of the garden, and he wasn't to eat of that tree of good and evil, or the tree of knowledge. And <clears throat> so, Yahweh created man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nose. He became a living being is put into the garden to take care of it and nurture it. And that was man's duty. Just simply, it was his duty. You understand what duty is? This is what is expected of him. He isn't going to get praised for doing it. He isn't going to get lauded for doing it. It's what is expected of him. And he was to obey the Creator and care for the garden. And 
we find the same premise when it comes to the commandments and after the fall in Ecclesiastics, which is at the bottom of every email I send out. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Because basically, the whole word, the whole word of Yahweh. The Old Testament, the New Testament, all the way to the last word in, in Revelation. From the first word in Genesis to the last word in Revelation. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. It's the whole duty of man. So that's what we are supposed to do. That's all. That's our duty. We don't get a praise for it. We don't get a pat on the back. It's expected of us. Just like just like if you um, I don't even know how to how to look at it in the terms of our carnal world, but if you if you order a package in the mail, <clears throat> you expect it to come. You don't expect it to do anything but arrive at your doorstep. And if it doesn't, then you got a whole bunch of problems you got to deal with because it wasn't you what you expected did not happen same way with Yahweh same way with us we are expected it is our duty to do the commandments and keep the commandments and to honor the creation and live in the creation that Yahweh made and we'll get into a little bit more about that because there's so much going on in the world that is even against the creation. So anyway, that's what Yahweh did. He put man in the garden, and he gave him everything to eat. He gave him the herb bearing seed uh, that was on the face of the earth, every tree which the fruit yield, yielded a seed. He told, told him what he could eat, and they said that was going to be food for you. And he told the beasts what they were going to eat. He gave them the green herb for food also. And out of the ground, Yahweh made to grow every tree that was pleasant to sight and good for food. All right? <clears throat> and these were in the garden. So that's what Yahweh gave for man to eat. Now, they were in the garden, and the man said, this is now bone of my bone. This was after um, Yahweh created Eve out of his rib, right? He said, uh, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she came out of man. They were both naked and were not ashamed. They were innocent. From any wrongdoing, they were spotless. They were clean. And they only had two commandments to obey. It was their duty. Care for the garden and not to eat of the tree of knowledge. And again, again, we want to take notice too to this is that in the garden was the tree of life the same tree we're going to have a right to eat of again and um, it is a false doctrine it is a false teaching it is completely false for um, <sighs> The, the preface of salvation is, oh, you're saved and now you have everlasting eternal life. And that is as far from the truth as can be. You don't have it until you eat of the tree. 
There's something about us in this creation in man is that we get eternal life from eating of the tree of life. The tree of life is not Yeshua. It is the physical tree of life that Yahweh created. And if man would have ate of it, they would have actually lived forever. There would have never been any death. Um, so that this created being us, we never had to die. I think that's really, really important to understand. Now I'm going to be hypothetical here, and I shouldn't be, but I'm going to be. I think that if the man and woman had eaten of the tree of life, that the <clears throat> flaming sword, the angel, would have been put around the tree of knowledge so that man could have never touched it. But just the opposite actually happened. And this is when this is where the disobedience entered into this world. This is where the the package that you order it in the mail didn't show up. And now you're dealing with this. Why didn't this package show up? What happened? Now the serpent <clears throat> in this case was more subtle. It was the evil one. Um than any beast of the field which Yahweh the Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Hath not Yahweh said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, or unto the evil one. And, you know, we don't really know too much did the spirit of Satan come into the serpent? How did that work? But we know that the man and woman communicated with the animals because they had dominion over them. And I know you don't like the book of Jubilees. You don't like to uh, read the other scriptures, but Jubilees does say that the, the animals and, and the man communicated. Uh, before the fall and once the fall came then that communication got cut off because the man and woman lost their dominion anyway back to the scripture uh, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden Yahweh has said you shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it lest you die and the serpent <clears throat> oh, I gotta come back. The there's a whole bunch of teaching out there that says, well, look, uh, uh, the woman embellished what Yahweh told him and said that uh, neither can you touch it. Well, just because it's not recorded, uh, where uh, Yahweh told him not to eat of it doesn't mean he didn't say not to touch it too so you can't say she was embellishing anything you can't say that she was going beyond and adding to the commandment because you don't have that evidence as a matter of fact what the evidence you have here is he said don't eat or touch of it that's what you have um, but all those kind of teachings are to prove a point that's not biblical anyway and the servant said to the woman no you shall surely you will not die you absolutely you won't for Yahweh knows that the day you eat thereof then your eyes will be open and you shall be Elohim knowing good and evil now <clears throat> so we have the evil one tempting her and the lie that he told in the very beginning of the, of the scriptures you shall not surely die for what? for disobeying it isn't because 
what killed obedience that killed them. And the same, it's the same lie 6,000 years later uh, everywhere. Oh, you sin, you won't, surely won't die. It's okay. You don't have to keep the Sabbath. You won't die. It's a, it's the same lie, just different cloaks, same lie, different clothes, different color. <clears throat> then when the woman saw it was good, she took the fruit and did eat and gave it to her man that was with her. And he did eat. And their eyes were opened and they knew they were naked. They knew good and evil. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They tried to cover their shame. That's what men do today. They try to cover their own uh, disobedience with their doctrines of men, with their uh, one-verse theologies. That's what they're doing. They're covering themselves with those things. They're not letting the word wash them clean. They're not listening to Yeshua. They're not listening to Yahweh. Anyhow, the innocence was lost. And these created beings made of the dust of the earth were now spotted and unclean. They could no long they were no longer the good and pure creation of Yahweh. They just weren't. They were tainted. They had tainted that good and pure creation by not doing their duty. And this is the key thing. They did not do their duty that was required of them. They used the free will Yahweh gave to them to disobey their creator. They weren't robots. They weren't forced to do anything but they use that free will to disobey and not do their duty. And once that <clears throat> disobedience came into play, so did death. And they heard the voice of Yahweh walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his woman hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh, the Elohim, amongst the trees of the garden. And Yahweh called unto the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And Yahweh said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded you that you should not eat? And of course, we know that Adam said yes. And uh, then the first death came into this creation when Yahweh killed an animal and made skins to clothe them with. In other words, Yahweh had to cover them. Their covering of fig leaves wasn't good enough. It's the same as men's doctrine is not going to cover you. You cannot sit there in your Sunday churches and and in some churches you won't even Oh, you'll have a one verse and then you'll talk about all kinds of philosophy and feel goods and you know, all this positive thinking in other churches, you'll you'll read scripture, but then you'll just, you got a, supposedly a whole church full of saved people, and all you want to do is talk about the cross, and how you, how you got to come to the cross and be to the cross. Why? You got, I thought you were all saved. Why don't you speak something edifying? You don't 
you're missing the mark, folks. You're missing the mark. And the mark is to do your duty to Yahweh. That's all it is. It's so simple. It is so simple. And the redemption back to Yahweh is so simple. But anyhow, I digress. Sorry. Um, death came. And with that death came the curse. <clears throat> but first, before we get to the curse, what happened with death is, and what did Yahweh say to the man? Uh, In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken for dust you are, and unto dust you will return. That's what we are, folks. We're dust. We came out of the ground. Get it. There's nothing. We are a very special and peculiar thing in this creation, but we're still dust. And death entered into this world by disobedience of the created man. Man was no longer given the right to live forever. That was taken away. They could not grasp that tree of knowledge. A man was going to return to the dust from which he was created. And such, and such is with men and women today. That's what we have today. We all return to the dust of the earth. Even after Yeshua died on the cross and arose from the dead, we still return to the dust. Men die and rot and return to dust. We do not live forever. We are not in purgatory or in paradise. When we die, we return to the dust. For dust we are, and unto dust we shall return. And that's exactly what Yahweh said. For dust you are, and in dust you shall return. Get it. Grasp that. And contemplate it upon it. There's a psalm that talks about it that get wisdom. Number your days and get wisdom. Because that's what it is. We just got a short period here. And from this fall here now, we have a curse. And this was a curse that was put upon the man and the woman. The woman ate, so she got hers first. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In birth pains, in conception, uh, in sorrow you will bring forth children. And why is it? Because you see your children die, you see them sick, you see so much is in the depth of this sorrow in children and bringing them forth. And you watch the evil that they do when you that come out or them in a, in a lot of cases. And <clears throat> and then um, your desire shall be to your to your man and he shall rule over you. She was put under the authority of her man. Because of the curse, she was no longer an equal to him, but she was under his authority. And that doesn't mean we rule our wives with our fists or with a rod of iron. No. We, as men that do our duty to our Creator, will love our wives just as we love our Creator. At least that's what we're supposed to do. Now to the man, and unto the man he said, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your woman, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, and in sorrow shall you eat it all the days of your life. 
and thorns also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and you shall eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of your face shall you eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it were you taken, for dust you are, and unto dust you will return. And this is what this is what we all need to grasp on this too. We run after riches. We run after gain. We want what the neighbor has. We want this. We want that. Oh, I don't want to work for him because I don't get paid enough. And then, and then he's mean and all. Hey, guess what? It's the curse. That is where we're at. And that is not going away. At least not until the issue is returned. But for now, it is here. And that is our duty. Now as men, that's what's happening to us. We're going to go out. We're going to work in the sweat of our brow. That means, that means it's not easy. And whether you're working in a factory, driving a truck, uh, working in the, on the farm, uh, working in a store. The sweat of your brow is all the difficulties you have and the deep people you have to deal with. And you get all done and you get home and you barely have enough to buy the food and barely have enough to pay the rent. That is the curse. The prosperity teaching out there, that, oh, you're going to have money, give it, you got to be rich. God's going to just pour out is, is a bunch of lies because all of that comes from the devil. Yeah, there are those out here in the family of Yahweh that have finances to help the other brethren. And it's not a it's not a transgression to have uh, finances, but the point is is that even with those we still have the sweat of our brow, we still have the difficulties and the things that uh, of this life, and that is part of the curse. And then Yahweh expelled them from the garden. And Yahweh said, Behold, the man is become one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he bring forth his hand and take of the tree of life and eat and live forever, he put him out of the garden. Therefore, Yahweh sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground <clears throat> from which he was taken. And he drove the man out and he placed him on the east side of Eden. On the east, and he placed on the east side of Eden, Eden a flaming sword to protect the way of the tree of life. And, and man was cut off from the tree of life. Man could not eat of that tree. Man was going to return to dust. So, <clears throat> and this is where, um, as we get into the true gospel message of what is going to take place by the word, uh, we'll get into a little more on the tree of life in later lessons here. But this is exactly where we're at today, the same place 6,000 years later as it was when the man and woman were kicked out of the garden. We eat by the sweat of our brow. There's nothing to be gained. And we're, we're living under the curse. We're living under a curse. And then in Genesis 3.20, after they were expelled, then the man called his wife's name, or the woman's name, Eve, because she was the mother of all living. All living. There is no, no first creation of man and second creation of man. There's no two creations of man. There's no two Eves. There's no, there's no Adam and Eve and man and woman. The 
everybody this is it folks get it in your head this is it the man and the woman from the creation was kicked out of the garden they started everyone out here anything else is a lie period sorry I get excited about this stuff because because of the deceptions and the lies that people let themselves get into um, and all from different supposed prophets and things of this time but it's really it's so simple just read your Bibles look at your Bible study it if you don't quite understand the word look up what the word was in Hebrew and or in Greek and and take a look at it it's not hard we have all the tools today there's no one that does not have the tool available to them and I say that in reality because in the whole wide world it's everywhere that people can go someplace and ask and find it so to wrap this one up <clears throat> Adam was created perfect good clean and innocent the woman created from his flesh was also perfect clean and innocent because they used their free will to choose to not do their duty and to disobey our Creator mankind came to know good and evil and the curse of death came upon us all and we all return to the dust from which we were formed basic uh, kindergarten Bible uh, theology here that's what it is basic kindergarten Bible doctrine the true doctrine of the word and you don't know what it is and then the curse of death we are expelled from the Garden of Eden no longer do we have unlabored free access to our food we have to work in order to eat and sustain ourselves in the women knowing that we were naked we also had to provide clothing and shelters shelter for our bodies nothing was any longer provided freely we Yahweh gave the man and the woman a covering and after that uh, their children and all their descendants had to provide their own coverings and their own shelter their own food and so it is today we live in a dying world where men and women struggle and toil in vain to live a few short years and then die and return to the dust of the ground from where we came and no amount of good works or the science of men can prevent this from occurring we have been cursed by our Creator due to our disobedience or due to the fact that we did not do our duty so the good news is that there is hope in Yeshua the Messiah of Yahweh and we will talk about the redemption and the next well we'll talk about obedience a little bit more in the next uh, video and the redemption and we keep it simple because it is very very simple and uh, all most all modern day churches have either thrown out a whole bunch of the redemption or they've added to it and um, it's it's such a simple thing to get into the kingdom it's so simple to be able to have right to the tree of life in the end 
and that's what I'm hoping to bring to you here. So I'm praying to Yahweh that he will bless his word and that it will touch your heart <clears throat> and may this simply may Yahweh's word bless your hearts. Thanks for listening.